condition in this case. But in this next example, we are dealing with the oblique collisions between two rigid body. Now, before we continue on, we need to differentiate between uh, particles and rigid body. Now, for all our previous example, we are making assumptions uh, all the object is considered as a particle. Now, by considering that situation or that object as a particle, we basically um, zoom in, I would say zoom in our perspective uh, by looking at the particle as a point mass. So the center of mass is actually the particle itself. All right. <clears throat> and then uh, by making assumption it is a point mass, so therefore there will not be any rotational uh, mechanics that we need to consider here. But for a rigid body, the rigid body here, um, the size does matter. And then uh, because the size does matter, the center of mass of the object uh, would be very important in our analysis. But most of the time, we are making assumptions the center of the mass is located um, in the normal positions of that particular object. For instance, for a sphere, the center is, is always located at the center itself. Right? <clears throat> Unless you have uh, combinations of two or more rigid bodies. Right? <clears throat> now, uh, how different is the collisions of a particle and a rigid body look like in terms of oblique collision? Now, let's try to explore this more by looking at this example. Right? Now, in this example, we have two smooth spheres, A and B. Uh, let me label that A and B. So this is sphere A. This is sphere B. Uh, each have a mass of MA and MB. It, it, it could be any, uh, uh, any mass at all. Now, they collide among each other. Now, immediately before the collision, the velocity of A is U at an angle alpha with the line uh, that passes through the center of the sphere. So this is the line that indicate uh, passing through the center of the mass. Whereas the velocity of B is V here, um, colliding at an angle beta with the line that pass through the center. So the angle is shown here. This is before uh, collision. Now it's always a good practice to write down the horizontal component before the collision. So the horizontal uh, component of the velocity before collisions for A is U cosine alpha. Whereas the horizontal component uh, for object B before collision is v cos beta. Both the vertical component for A and B remain unchanged after collision. So you can see that after collision, uh, the vertical component of the velocity remain the same because we assume that both this sphere is smooth, they have smooth surface, so therefore it does not allow rotational uh, situations to occur. So the initial vertical component of the velocity is u sine alpha for a and then a v sine beta for b. So after collision, by making an assumption that uh, the surface uh, is smooth, therefore there is no rotational effect. Um, as a consequence of that, the vertical component of the velocity after collisions remain the same for both a, object a and object b. Now the only uh, the only component that would uh, change would be the horizontal component of the velocity for both A and B. So you're going to label this as um, I'm going to label this as U here, capital letter U, and then this one will be capital letter V. The component, the horizontal component of the velocity after the collision. Okay. <clears throat> right. Now for this situation, we have to take into account uh, two principles. The first one will be conservation of momentum. So we can apply conservation of momentum. Of course, uh, by making assumptions that there is no external force acting um, 
onto this particular system here. <coughs> so based on conservation of momentum, we can set up an equation uh, relating all the velocity uh, of the object A and B before and after. So we know that collisions, the total momentum before collision and after collision must remain the same. Okay. Now by looking at that, we have now we have before collisions, we have MA uh, U cosine alpha. All right. Now I do need to um, make um, make a sum uh, make make uh, an assumptions that uh, we are looking at. Our focus is on the horizontal component of the velocity. So I just put a symbol here just to signify uh, our focus of the conservation of momentum is towards the horizontal component during the collision. So that will give us um, MAU cosine alpha and then uh, since V cosine beta is acting in the opposite direction so we will have a negative sign here. So that will be V cosine beta. That should be equal to the final momentum which is M A U capital letter U whereby M B B here. Alright now the directions after the collisions are basically just our assumption when we do it mathematically. <clears throat> but at the end after solving uh, all the um, equations that we have we will be able to obtain the actual directions after the collision itself. Uh, again, I need to stress that our um, analysis is based on the horizontal component during and after the collision. Uh, the main reason why we don't analyze the vertical component is because we assume that the surface between them is smooth, there is no rotational effect, therefore the vertical component remain the same. Our total momentum before and after uh, would be the same, which is uh, basically there is no change. For the vertical component. Right. <clears throat> okay, now that is our first uh, equation here. And then next, by using Newton uh, restitution law, one more time, uh, we're going to set up another equations relating the final velocity after collisions and before collision. So here we can have uh, V minus U. Uh, also, again, we are focusing on the horizontal component uh, during the impact. That would actually give us, assuming that the coefficient of um, coefficients of restitution is e, so therefore we can write that down as uh, m. Uh, in this case, we have the initial velocity as u cos alpha uh, minus yes, but because the direction is different, so therefore we have plus here. Okay. Now from here, we managed to uh, construct two equations in both V and U, the final velocity. And now it's quite easy in this case to basically just solve one and two uh, using any simultaneous uh, equation strategy that you have learned. We would be able to, uh, to obtain V and U in this case. So basically, these are the two strategy. Just let me point that out again. Uh, strategy A and strategy B to solve um, these types of oblique collisions problem, where it involves rigid body. Right? So I need to stress again: this one we involve a uh, rigid body, and then uh, we are making assumptions that surface uh, is smooth. Therefore, there is no rotational uh, effect. A vertical component of the velocity remains the same. 